Ooh, one entertainer that didn't like things was uh, <laughs> Richard Belzer. Hogan, uh, on his media tour yes, yes. with Mr. T, appeared on Belzer's show Hot Properties, demonstrated a hold, uh, and dropped him on his skull, <laughs> leaving a couple uh, of blood it, it on was stage. A, it, was, it was a front face lock. As you can see by the blood, Belzer's head was cracked open. He needed eight stitches to close the wound and is reportedly planning to sue Hogan. <laughs> Now, we'll be right back after this word from you know who. Yeah, we'll be right back. Okay, I had no idea. When I said when I got up and said we'll be right back, I had no idea where I was. I was in shock. And that was a standard uh, uh, approach uh, that the wrestlers would, would apply on uh, somebody who questioned the legitimacy of the business. You tell me, you tell me wrestling is not. And Bret Hart told me that his father taught him, you know, if you get into a fight and people are saying your father's a faker, your father's a clown, don't break your hand on the kid's face. You know, put him in a front face lock and clamp down and you'll knock him out. And so I mentioned Larry the Axe Hennon before, the father of Mr. Wonderful, not Mr. Mr. Perfect, Kurt Hennon. You know, in the 80s, while wrestling was booming, he was still working in the AWA going into bars and when people would say, is that fake? He put him in front face locks and drop him on the floor of the bar. And that was, you know, you humbled people. You know, this was your livelihood. You gave up your family life for this. You know, you were on the road every night. You broke your body down and often ended up, you know, um, much worse off than your neighbors. So uh, that that's how Hulk Hogan conducted himself, the way he was, I've trained to. Does that fucking feel fake, huh? Does that feel fake? Does it? It got some negative publicity. And that's when wrestlers first started to be told that the old days are over. You do not drop celebrities on their heads, even if they question the business. Yeah, this is uh, two months after Stossel gets slapped backstage by David Schultz. Yes, yes. Uh, Belzer eventually would sue Hogan. Yeah, he came very close to killing me. I was told by sports medicine experts that if I had fallen a few inches either way, I could be crippled for life, I could have been dead. It's like a building coming up and hitting you in the head when you, when you fall of dead weight like that. And you I settled, sued. You settled out of court. Well, I sued them and it took years. Uh, I had, a, you know, America's a weird place. I mean, I'm not gonna live in anywhere else, but the judicial system. He, you saw what he did on live television, right? I think I take the tape with my lawyer, I go to the judge and say, babe, Five million. <laughs> Use the money to buy a farmhouse in Nice, France, which he ironically named Shea Hogan. Uh, <laughs> so I've heard. If 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 the story's true, and it, you know, why wouldn't it be? <laughs> but uh... the wrestling club with Darren and Brett. We've got a show that you'll never forget. Again.